the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we thank God for bringing us together as one community of faith, as one church, to be renewed by His Word, by the body and blood of Christ, and by the Spirit poured into our hearts. In the midst of our Advent preparation for the birth of Jesus, we celebrate the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Principal Patroness of the Philippines. We contemplate on Mary, the woman God has chosen to be the mother of the Savior. This solemnity reminds us that God keeps His promise of overcoming evil. He sends us the Savior who redeems His people from their sins. In anticipation of this redemption, Mary is conceived free from the stain of sin so that she will be a worthy mother of the Savior. As Mary lives up to her immaculate conception, listening to the Word of God and keeping it, so we are challenged to continue living up that privilege given to her for our sake. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Chelsea's day
let us pray. O God, who by the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin prepared a worthy dwelling for your Son, grant, we pray, that as you preserve her from every stain by virtue of the death of your Son, which you foresaw, so through her intercession, we too may be cleansed and admitted to your presence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. After the man, Adam, had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman whom you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, The serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and this woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. The man called his wife Eve because she became the mother of all the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
all the ends of the earth had seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. Sing to the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before Him. In love, He destined us for adoption to Himself through Jesus Christ in accord with the favor of His will for the praise of the glory of His grace that He granted us in the Beloved. In Him, we were also chosen, destined, in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory, we who first hoped in Christ. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. 
and the virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, Rejoice, so highly favored, the Lord is with you. She was deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what this greeting could mean. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favor. Listen, you are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, But how can this come about, since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered, and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow. And so the child will be holy and will be called Son of God. Know this too, your king's woman Elizabeth has in her, her old age herself conceive a son, and she whom a people called barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary. Let what you have said be done to me. And the angel lay, left her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing. seated. Your Excellency, Most Reverend Charles John Brown, Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines, Reverend Monsignor Rolando de la Cruz, our dear Cathedral Rector, Concelebrating Priests, Assisting Deacons, Persons in Consecrated Life, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. We rejoice today as we celebrate the titular feast of our Cathedral, the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Happy Fiesta po sa ating lahat. On this solemn feast day, we praise God who chose Mary to be the mother of our Redeemer, blessing her with a wholeness of heart and totally possessing her person so that she may be fully disposed to bear within her the Son of God himself. As we honor Mary, we strive to emulate her total self-donation, her full participation in God's loving plan. I am also happy to inform you that we are reviving today the custom of allowing the faithful to come up here at the sanctuary after the liturgy. I invite you all to make this act of devotion later so you can venerate the image of our Immaculate Mother more closely. And as you come up here, I invite you to look at the four column capitals 
that support the canopy over the image of Our Lady. These column capitals are adorned with etch images of four symbolic tree branches derived from the description of Lady of Wisdom in the book of Sirach. The branch of cypress of a palm, palm tree, of olive tree, and of a plane tree. These symbolic trees also help us to appreciate the person and mission of our Immaculate Mother. The first symbol is the branch of a cypress tree. Because of the strength and durability of the wood that it produces, cypress has often been used for construction projects. In the Bible, the most important building that used cypress wood was the temple in Jerusalem, the house of the abiding presence of God. Like the cypress tree, Mary also allowed herself to be God's instrument so that His people might encounter the fullness of His constant presence here on earth. She bore in her own body the Son of God and brought Him into this world. Through her fiat, God revealed His assurance to us that He does not abandon His people, that He draws near to His people as close as flesh and body. Indeed, Mary was the bearer of God's presence. The second symbol is the branch of a palm tree. In the ancient Near, uh, Near East, palm trees were important markers of an oasis where water and nourishment can be found amid the middle of the cruel and lifeless desert. The palm tree was a sign of life and hope especially for the weary pilgrims and sojourners. Like the palm tree, Mary also offered hope for pilgrim humankind. When we are lost in the wilderness of sin and despair, she would remind us of her son. When we are overwhelmed, by struggles and difficulties. She offers us her guidance and care. When we are weighed down by grief and distress, she assures us of God's constant providence. The Gospel narrates to us how Mary believed in the words of the angel that nothing will be impossible for God. Indeed, Mary was a woman of hope. The third symbol is the branch of an olive tree. In the biblical lands, olive trees were the source of oil. Oil was an important resource in ancient times. It was used as an ingredient in food, as a remedy for illnesses, and as fuel for lamps. It was also used in the ritual anointing of people who held sacred roles in the community, such as priests, prophets, and kings. 
Olive trees symbolize God's providence for His chosen ones. Like the olive tree, Mary signified God's providence for His chosen one. In her Magnificat, she joyfully proclaimed the greatness of the Lord, who looks with favor upon His lowly servant and fills the hungry with good things. She allowed God to choose her despite her lowly status for the lofty mission of being the mother of the Savior. She simply submitted herself to the gracious assistance of God. Indeed, Mary trusted in the providence of God who chose her. And the fourth symbol is the branch of a plain tree. The plain tree was especially known for its routine shedding of its bark, revealing the smooth trunk within it. In fact, because of its apparent nakedness, the Hebrew words for plain tree and nakedness seem to derive from the same root word. This transparency and bareness of plain trees make them symbols of the virtues of honesty and humility. Like the plain tree, Mary exemplified sincerity and integrity about herself. She honestly revealed her doubts by asking the angel, how can this be? And afterwards, she humbly described herself as a handmaid of the Lord. Indeed, Mary was a woman of honesty and humility. The cypress, the palm, the olive, and the plain. These are trees whose branches are symbolically etched on the column capitals of the altar canopy of our cathedral. They offer us biblical symbols of a woman marked by bearing God's presence, enduring in hope, trusting in God's providence, and modeling honesty and humility. They signify for us the virtues of Mary. Like our Immaculate Mother, may we also imbibe and practice these virtues. O Mary, conceive without sin, pray for us who have recourse to you. Amen. Please stand. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made, 
consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In her Immaculate Conception, Mary is revealed as the second Eve. She is God's new beginning for our race. As we honor her today, let us join her in prayer to our Father and Creator. Let the response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church may grow towards the perfection of Mary, our destiny and our hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through prayer and penance, the world may enter an age of peace, which is the triumph of Mary's heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the pure of heart may promote decency and harmony throughout society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Mary, who is full of grace, may, may help us on our pilgrimage. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead may rejoice forever in the company of Mary and the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, let us pray for our intentions and the intentions of all who ask for our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father and Creator, hear us as we pray with the Immaculate Ever-Virgin Mary, chosen before the world was made to be the mother of Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
all stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Graciously accept the saving sacrifice which we offer you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and grant that as we profess her on account of your prevenient grace to be untouched by any stain of sin, so through her intercession we may be delivered from all our faults through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you preserve the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin, so that in her, endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might prepare a worthy mother for your son and signify the beginning of the church, his beautiful bride without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure virgin, was to bring forth a son, the innocent lamb, who would wipe away our offenses. You placed her above all others, to be for your people an advocate of grace and a model of holiness. <coughs> and so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not, I'm worthy, not worthy that you should enter, enter under, under my, roof, my roof, but don't but only say, say the word, word and, and my soul, soul shall be healed. healed.
please stand. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, heal in us the wounds of that fault from which in a singular way you preserve Blessed Mary in her Immaculate Conception. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please all kneel. Act of Consecration and Entrustment to the Immaculate Conception. We have recourse to your protection, O Holy, Holy Mother, Mother of God, God as, as we recite the words of this antiphon with which the, the Church of Christ has prayed for centuries. We find ourselves today before you, our Immaculate Mother, we who make up the body of Christ present in our land, recite the words of this act of consecration and entrustment in which we gather, first of all, the hopes and anxieties of our Filipino people at this moment of our history. Mother of our people, we rejoice in the name Pueblo Amante de Maria, a people who love Mary, Bayang Sumisinta kay Maria. You know all our sufferings and our hopes. You have a mother's awareness of all the struggles between good and evil, between light and darkness, which afflict the world today. Mother of our people, accept the cry which we, deeply moved by the Holy Spirit, address directly to your heart. Embrace with the love of the mother and handmaid of the Lord, our people and our land, which now we entrust and consecrate to you. For we are truly concerned for the earthly and eternal destiny of every individual among us and for all your people. We have recourse to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions in our necessities. From hatred, violence, and conflicts which divide and destroy our people, deliver us. From sins against human life, from its very beginning, Deliver us from the demeaning of the dignity of the children of God. Deliver us from every kind of injustice in the life of society. Deliver us from readiness to trample on the commandments of God. Deliver us from the loss of awareness of good and evil. Deliver us from sins against the Holy Spirit. Deliver us. Accept, O Immaculate Mother of Christ, this cry, laden with the hopes and burdens, the sufferings of each one of us and of all your people. Let there be revealed once more in our own history as a people the infinite power of the redemption, the power of merciful love. May it destroy the power of sin and evil among us. May it transform consciences. O oh Mary, Mother of Jesus and our Mother, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. Amen. Please all stand.
please be seated. At this point, before the Cardinal gives the final blessings, I wish to thank everyone for joining us in this fiesta celebration. I thank His Eminence, Jose Cardinal Advincula, our Archbishop, for presiding over the Eucharist and giving an educational, inspiring homily. Truly, <laughs> truly, His presence here signifies His special love for the Manila Cathedral community. I thank His Excellency Ex-Bishop Charles J. Brown, the Apostolic Nuncio, for gracing this occasion with his presence. I know he is very busy too, but he came to make us feel that we have a friend in him. I thank my brother priests who concelebrate with the Cardinal in this fiesta mass. Now we know that love nyo kami ni Father Biel. No. God be with you. Let us continue praying for one another, my dear brother priests. Thank you for the member, to the members of the Manila Cathedral Basilica Foundation who are with us today. Thank you to the police and medical personnel and the Intramuros administration for their support. Thank you for the TV Maria and other media people for covering this event. Thank you to the servant volunteers of the Manila Cathedral Basilica, the altar servers, the greeters and collectors, the lectors and commentators, the choir, organists and instrumentalists, the extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion, the sacristan. Your dedication always inspires me to give my best. Pagpalainawa kayong lagi ng Diyos. Thank you to all of you, devotees of the Immaculate Conception and friends of the Manila Cathedral, you who are phys physically present here and you who are following us online. You came from all over. Your prayers, words of encouragement, and financial support enable us to accomplish our task with less stress. God bless you more abundantly. Finally, I wish to thank those who work behind the scenes. They are our security guards, our maintenance personnel, our hard workers, our office staff, the cathedral personnel. There are so many to be named. If you feel safe and secure here, if you find this place of worship spotless and clean, if you find the decorations beautiful, it is all because of them. Though they are paid, <laughs> though they are paid, they work beyond their pay grade. Thank you too to Gayak de Manila for the excellent flower arrangements, to Mang Emil for the singkaban, and architect Kat Kuyo for the design. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. And thank you, Father Biel, my only vice. Your support and encouragement Your support and encouragement make my work as rector less heavy. It is my first fiesta here, and I believe it is off to a good start. Thanks to the guidance of Mary Immaculate, to God be the glory. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. As was mentioned by the Cardinal during the homily, after the Mass, you will be allowed to come nearer to the image. Everyone will go that way to enter, 
and they will go this way to exit for all, all their uh, orderly uh, fashion. And also, there, is, there are still 4 p.m. mass and 6 p.m. mass this afternoon. May, you may have friends who have not gone to mass today. Please tell them there will be additional ma masses in the afternoon. And also, advertisement, the calendars for 2024 are now available. Thank you. Happy Fiesta. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.